What is up, everybody? Scratch coming up with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Welcome to the channel, everyone. We are currently on the test server. We're gonna have a look at Marichka, the new Void Legendary that's been added to the game. She looks actually pretty da damn crazy. I would love to get a champion. And she's pairing with Taras. They're kind of like a, a pair, like a couple. And we're gonna have a look at both of them together. I, I've already done a video on Taras uh, yesterday. So feel free to check that out if you're curious to see a more in-depth guide on him. But Marichka, the Unbreakable. We didn't really have a chance to do a video on the champion just yet. And unfortunately, I cannot do Hydra on the test server at the moment. Because I need 6 plus hours to be able to do a key. Because I had to change clans to find a different clan boss. That's a different affinity. And kind of like a lot of things got messed up uh, in the process. So now I need to wait 6 hours. I'm going to explain you... What exactly I see in her kit when we are talking about Hydra Clan Boss. So, if we're gonna have a look at the skills. With the A1 attacks one enemy, a random ally will team up and join the attack uh, using the default skill. If Taras the Fierce is on the same team, uh, he will always join the attack. The A2 fully restores any allies decrease max HP, then heals all allies by 40% of this champion's max HP, places a shield buff and a protect, uh, protected strength and buff on all allies for two turns. The value of the shield buff is equal to 20% of this champion's max HP. This champion's max HP. That's what you want to see on every support champion. Their own HP, because the more HP you give them, the stronger the heal, the stronger the shield. And this is actually very, very powerful. For the new dungeon boss, for Hydra, if I'm not mistaken, the Head of Decay actually decreases the max HP, so... She's going to be able to restore it, which is brilliant. The A3 removes all debuffs from all allies, then fills the turn meter of all allies by 15%, fills the turn meter of each ally by an extra 5 for each debuff removed from them. This is a bit harder to tune for clan boss, right? Because a lot of turn meter, a lot of things can go wrong, a lot of uh, buffs can... Uh, be resisted when the boss is attempting to to do that a lot of debuffs sorry not buffs so that can mess up the the entire tune is a bit hard to to make her work in clan boss but increases the resistance of all allies by five for each debuff removed grants an extra turn if five or more debuffs were removed think about hydra so think about generally a long fight a round uh, an arena fight a clan boss anything is considered a round except the waves which are different rounds so this has no limit on how much resistance she can actually increase. So if the Head of Blight will land three poisons on each one of your champions, having six champions in there, and she's going to be able to remove all those debuffs, she's going to give you so much resistance, okay, that she's going to transform a non-resistance team into a super high resistance team. Like, it, it has no limit. It could take your resistance to like 1,000 on all your team. That's how crazy this can be on Hydra. And yes, you might... You might need to be a bit careful uh, on the very first few uh, few uh, turns because the head of uh, mischief can still mess you up. But once she's going to use this skill a few times and cleanse a lot of debuffs, it's going to be awesome, awesome how much resistance she's uh, going to be able to give to your team, you know. And uh, the passive revives all that allies with 50% HP and 75% turn meter whenever this champion is killed. Of course, she's not going to revive herself, just the rest of the team. And then places a block damage buff on all allies for a turn whenever an ally receives a bomb, poison, or HP burn debuff. If there are multiple champions on the same team with this skill, only one will activate. Then we have a speed aura uh, for all battles. 24%. Pretty nice. She's built on a, on a resistance set and a regeneration. Total stats, I have 82k HP, 3.4k defense. 234 speed, 590 resistance. I have too much resistance. I didn't intend it to get so much resistance, but somehow it just piled up. I would prefer to have even more HP. Get her to like 100k HP, and she's gonna get like a crazy 40k heal only with the A2, and then you're gonna get a, a massive shield as well, you know? So the more HP, the better for the build, but you still wanna get some resistance maybe on her, so she's spot on for most of the dungeons and bosses especially for the new dungeon the sand devil's necropolis you know and masteries i actually have defense and support 
I have Unshakable, I could potentially change and go to Timely Intervention as a tier 6 instead, because I already have so much resistance, I don't need to have more than 500. And maybe even get Lasting Gifts instead of uh, Cycle of Revenge, or maybe instead of Retribution. Quite a few options on, uh, on the table, no need for accuracy on the champion, so don't really bother with that. Now, how we mentioned, time to test her out a bit, so we're gonna... Take her in the Sand Devils Necropolis. We're gonna take her in the Dragon together with Taras. Just to see a couple of things that can happen. That can go crazy. And we're gonna test them in Arena as well. Unfortunately, how I mentioned, I'm not able to do Hydra. But if we're gonna go over to the Sand Devils Necropolis. I'm gonna show you the most free-to-play team you've ever seen. And we're gonna go with 4 Void Legendaries and a Spirit Legendary. Easy. Free-to-play. I'm just messing with you guys. We're gonna test on stage 25 just to show you how it works with the decreased uh, max HP, you know. So you see, she revived everybody else with a passive, except herself, then Duchess revived her. So right now, Acrisia just de decreased the Termiter, and she's gonna come in play and recover all the max HP on uh, our Acrisia. So damn nice. So damn nice. I, li I like the idea of that. And by the way, we have a 10x on Chagur starting tomorrow. The chances to summon the champion that's on the 10x is almost like winning the lottery. Astronomical chances. But Chagur is such a beast against this boss. He's constantly, uh, constantly putting him to sleep. There, there we go. He's just not going to move anymore. The boss is going to get locked. I've already done a guide on Chagur and this boss. Feel free to check that out for uh, more information about it if needed. If you have a Chagur, if, if you got lucky enough, maybe you're going to pull one tomorrow. But yeah, he's actually a beast again uh, to go against this boss. Constantly sleeping him. There you go. <laughs> he, he just doesn't make a move, you know. We're going to try a different team on a lower stage when we do, where we're not using the most free-to-play champions. We're going to use something else. Okay. How are we doing in here? Let's see. Go back to sleep again. Nobody wants you. So yeah, only the strength and is protected. I don't know why last time I kind of like misread it. And for some reason I thought that the shield will get protected too. But it's just the, the strength. And, which is, is still pretty pretty good. If they're not able to steal your, your strength and or remove it. Anything like that, you know. Come on, Acrisia. Start using those extra turns or refresh accessories. What's happening? You have Relentless, you have like two or three refresh accessories and nothing procs. There we go, there we go. See, I, you have to ask for it. No, it's not gonna happen. But the boss is literally making no moves with Chagur, man. It's so crazy, actually. There we go. You see, we asked again and it happened. Let's see the heal that we got from her. Marichka with one million heal. And then Raiho heals quite a bit as well. And she only healed 400k what a massive difference guys what a massive difference if we're gonna go all the way down to a different stage let's do for example stage 11 and we're gonna have a more decent team right we're gonna use something like this army girl we have geomancer which is gonna deplete the termiter on the boss so his max hp is gonna get decreased completely that will actually bug the boss to don't use the a2 anymore but because we have marichka that's gonna get reversed his uh, hp is gonna get back on point the thing with Geomancer, when he's like this, he's gonna get a hit, you see? He's barely getting, barely reflecting any damage back. So if he's constantly getting one shot, smacked instantly, he's not really gonna stay alive to make use of his passive. So Geomancer becomes a bit more irrelevant on this dungeon if he's not uh, spot on, you know? There we go, Armiger coming in with a, with a hit. Max Stalker left the champion for sleep, guys. Definitely the second best champion after Chagur. Do not sleep on him. Farmable from campaign. Stage 9, if I'm not mistaken. Free rare. Best sleep champion. Two turns. Uh, two turns sleep on a two turn cooldown. 100% chance to land. The affinity is the problem, you know. There we go. Bang, we landed that too. So, Marichka, not only that she's gonna give us the lost HP back. She's gonna heal us. She's gonna give us the strengthen, which helps uh, on the boss. Because the boss doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, ignore that. And on top of it, she's gonna increase our resistance as well. The more debuff she cleanses, the more resistance we're getting on, on our team. Which is nice too. 
we got resisted there because she didn't cleanse in time the decrease accuracy. But we're pretty done with this run, almost, you know. This team works on higher stages too, guys. It's just taking a bit longer. I didn't want it to uh, keep the video too long while I'm just doing this, this dungeon because I do want to test a couple of other things. But stage 16 upwards is just getting wrecked. You just got to make sure you have enough accuracy on your champions in order to, to be completed there, you know. And to make sure the boss won't one-shot everyone. Somebody needs to, to stay alive. But with Marichka and her passive, she's going to... Revive everyone else and then God Seeker and Eric could revive her, you know. So it's pretty pretty spot on. You don't need to have stone skin or anything like that for it to happen. I'm actually quickly gonna show you an example on a on a higher stage, you know. Just just the, the beginning, literally. You have a few options when you're doing things like, like this. Either you're making Max Stalker uh, to go the very first champion when the termiter on the boss is low, so the rest of the team can go after. I have my Geomancer with refresh accessories. I have him on Relentless, so uh, Cycle of Magic for Masteries. His A3 is constantly getting decreased. It's not going to be spot on like if I would tune the team. I got to make sure none of these things happen, and then he's always going to use the skill at the right moment. That's why he's kind of like doing all this uh, random stuff right now, you know. But here we are. Destroying the max HP with the skill, which is fine, because Marichka... Marichka, she has it under control. Land the debuffs. She didn't cleanse them this time around. So we might we might have a bit of an issue here again. If we're gonna get resisted. Okay, we have the sleep. Geo. Don't get resisted. Ally attack. That's gonna land the knock down that um, that sleep on the boss, yeah. Okay, but he's he's almost melted. We had a bit of a bad RNG with Geomancer and his HP burn. Always kind of like using it at the wrong at the wrong uh, moment. He literally just used it before too. <laughs> Funny. But it's fine. Armiger is here to finish the fight. Armiger doesn't back out, you know. And his skill is on a two-turn cooldown too. Funny enough, like... It feels like the free champions, like the uncommons, the rare, some of them having skills on a two-turn cooldown is pretty nice. So if we're gonna go, for example, stage 25 with the same team... We're gonna get one shot, right? Marichka's passive is gonna revive the rest. And uh, maybe Godseeker and Iris' passive is gonna revive Marichka. Let's actually see. It's gonna happen like that or no? Come on, boss. Do it. Boof. Okay. Oh, okay. You've seen what happened? So, Godseeker and Iris' passive actually activated in front of her passive. That's actually... That's not good. It should go... In the order of your lead, man. Her passive should come in play first. And if Godseeker and Iris passive comes in play after, it's fine. But like this, it's just... Oh, there we go. There we go. Look, look, look at that. Okay, I was not expecting it to happen, but it, it happened. Okay, it happened. So we are... <laughs> we're back. We're back. There you go. That's how it's gonna work if you're gonna use her with a different reviver. You don't need Godseeker and Iris. Godseeker and Iris revived her before we could have saved all this nonsense and have a different reviver like a Rector Threat or somebody like that. But Godseeker and Illish is just too good. That's how it works, guys. That's how it works. Pretty nice. Okay. That's surprisingly because I, I thought like, okay, it's going to be game over. Maybe her passive tried to activate with Godseeker and Illish and it got messed up or it didn't. So if we're going to go in the Dragon Slayer, guys, we're going to have a new sort of thing in here. No Seer. We have Taras, which can be the next Seer, the next Wave Killer. The more buffs he has, the more damage he has. His damage can go off the roof, okay? That's why I have Sif in here. I have uh, Marichka. We're getting buffed by all these champions. So Taras can go in and smack. Marichka and Taras. The, the couple of the year. Actually, no. Venus and Cupidus were still the couple of the year. But we have all the buffs up. We have all the all the debuffs there. And I think Ham Smasher just didn't proc on, on that enemy there. Or maybe Venus took an extra turn. She lost some of the buffs. But here we go again. The damage is just nuts. All the buffs. 572k hit, guys. 572k hit from Taras. That is disgusting. And what's gonna happen now? Whenever somebody... 
whenever somebody tries to hit his bride, he's gonna attack with the A2. Whenever she's gonna use the A1, he's gonna join in with his A1, you know? Ally attack, bang, double hit in there, 100k, decrease attack, because why not? And whenever the dragon is gonna hit us, he's gonna use the A2 to counter. 489k! Because of all the buffs. You see, that was the ally attack, because the dragon hit uh, Marichka, and he used his A2. Now again, he joined in with the A1. A1 again. Pretty nice. Very nice, actually. Another ally attack. He's joining in. Dropping 100k like, like it's nothing. Two Void Legendaries, man. I just wish they would be easier to, to get, to collect, you know? 277k. We didn't have so many buffs on the team. But you see, the more buffs we're getting on, the more damage he's, uh, he's dealing. Bang. 400k just to end it. And we have Taras with 5.1 million damage. Marichka with 1.2. Aye, aye, aye. Let's actually have a look uh, how they perform in Arena together, you know. So if we're gonna go on here, let's go back. Up. Arena. And let's pick some fights. So we have Cupidus, Venus, Mortuma Cab. I'm gonna go with a team like this. So Taras has damage reduction from skills, okay? I'm still not 100% sure if this is just for him or for the entire team. We're doing actually some testing. I'm talking with Seth about it and we're going back and forward with some of the things. So we're going to see. On single target, I've seen that if somebody attacks a different champion, his passive will not activate. So it might only be for himself. But then we have Harima with more damage reduction as well. And of course, we have more support. We have uh, Duchess to bring in some buffs and just to uh, protect us a bit more with the Veil and stuff. But here we are. Landed that provoke on the on the demon spawns. You attack my Marichka. It's not good for you. That's what Tara says. It's just not good for you. You shouldn't attack Marichka. And whenever Cupidus attacks AoE, Taras decreases his attack, you know. Marichka just used the A1 on Cupidus. He joined the attack. Bang. 20 seconds. Pretty straightforward. Then we can go against some different teams. Let's go against this one, for example. So what we're going to see right here, I'm not going to use Duchess's A2. I want to have that... Uh, I want to have that... Uh, Mitrala to poison me. We already got shipped just by landing the fear. That's what happens. That's what happens. I can't cleanse it. I can't do nothing. But I'm still going to use this skill to get the strength and a shield on the team. So we're not really getting uh, completely wrecked. Let's provoke whoever we can. This that candy. Okay. Bah. <laughs> bah. The... The ally attack, the ship attack. They should actually make a make like a ring. Like a, a ringtone to it too. You know, like the ship sound. Would be nice. Let's cleanse that. Okay, can we get some poisons from you, Mitrala? Let's let's decrease a bit the defense. Nice. I'm still not going to use that A2, guys. I wanna get po poisoned by Mitrala. Come on, Mitrala. There we go. Block damage on all my team except Duchess because she got uh, petrified. But that's pretty nice. It can come in as a clutch to get to, to, to help your team out. So let's do that again. And I can actually let them do whatever they want to do in here, you know. Provoke again and that, on that Mortu. He's not going to be able to use the Peril. And Taras is going to put him to sleep. Like, he's such, such a force to reckon with. I'm not even sure what happened here. If this bugged out or whatever. Maybe it skipped the animation of Taras. Or they just gave up. <laughs> they just gave up. They were like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to attempt to fight this guy. Because he, he's going to win it anyway, you know? <laughs> I think, like, I feel like that's what happened. Let's find another team. And then we're going we're gonna to call it a day here. Victor Test plus four Cupidus. Let's give it a go on this one. They do have some polymorph on as well. Lots of stone skin. Everybody's on stone skin here. Okay. Whenever Cupidus is going to attack us now, he's going to get his attack decreased. 
We got provoked there. We got the block damage on because of the HP burn that just landed from Cupidus. So that can keep the team alive. We're not getting any damage anymore. She's going to get to cleanse us. We're going to get a massive heal too. And we're going to get a lot of resistance uh, on the team now. Let me just make sure she is using that skill because we definitely need, uh, need, need to have her on. Okay. Okay, they, they lost their stone skin finally. <laughs> Dead. Okay. She's gonna revive in just a second here. Okay. The counter attack from Taras. Because uh, they attack Marichka. And he's going one minute, one minute in for this. But that Cupid is, he can, he cannot, he cannot wreck us. And we got them all, all down. It's not a fast farm, but still a pretty good, uh, pretty good one. But yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about Marichka Taras, the new Void Legend that is added to the game? Appreciate all of you guys watching. Much love, and I'll catch you all soon in the next video.